What's up everyone, I'm Joe from The Wrong Channel, and today's retro review takes us back to a time when man and dinosaur shared the earth. 1994. That's right, today we're looking at Chuck Rock for the Super Nintendo. Chuck Rock is a platformer game created by Core Design that features a beer-bellied caveman who fights dinosaurs by literally chucking rocks at them, although he also puts that beer belly to work. Core Design would later go on to create a game called Tomb Raider, whose success would ultimately leave the Chuck Rock series in the past. It's hard to say why Tomb Raider was such a tit, er, uh, hit. Yeah, that's it. Well, since it's a game about a caveman, I might as well introduce it in his native language. <coughs> Unga boonga, unga ungunga ga. Unga boonga goonga, unga goonga. The hell? Chuck Rock doesn't mess around. When you start the game, you get the opening credits, the title screen, and that's it. There are no options, no password screen, just Chuck Rock. Well, that's certainly a unique take on a 16-bit game. Most games from that time would at least give you some kind of option. Chuck Rock says, nope, not gonna do it. There isn't even any kind of introductory story. You see Chuck Rock and his caveman band playing their instruments during the title screen, but then you're tossed straight into the game. For your attacks, your range is pretty limited. You have a belly bash, which requires enemies to be close to hit, and you have a jump kick, which seems to have only a slightly larger range. However, the jump kick can be pretty tricky, and a lot of times you'll find yourself getting hit by enemies if you don't time it just right. In addition to Chuck's melee attacks, you can also pick up rocks found throughout the level, which can be thrown at enemies or used as a shield against projectiles. This greatly helps to counter the limited range of Chuck's standard attacks. You'll also use the rocks to gain access to out-of-reach areas. Since Chuck has a short jump, the rocks are used to catapult him higher in some instances, and also to provide the little leverage necessary to get to other areas. There are two types of rocks, a small rock and a big rock. When carrying a small rock, Chuck's speed and jump height are normal, but the larger rocks will slow him down and restrict his jump height. The trade-off is that the larger rocks give him more of a boost. So what about the health system? Is it like the Zelda games where you get a number of hearts, or is it like the Sonic games where you collect items that act as health? Nope! It's like the Grinch. That's right. You get a heart that shrinks as you get hit, and every time you get hit, you make a face like Large Marge from Pee-wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> the heart grows when you collect smaller hearts to replenish your life, but don't think for a second that if your heart fully shrinks, you'll turn into the Grinch, because you won't. You'll die. You'll just die. And considering you have a limited number of lives, it's a good idea to avoid dying at all costs. I know what you're thinking. Isn't it a good idea to not die in any game? Yes, that's true, but it's especially true in Chuck Rock. And here's why. Chuck Rock is an extremely unforgiving game. There are no instant one-ups, and it takes a lot of points to earn one. There are no continues. There is no password system. When you run out of the limited lives you have, it's back to the beginning of the game. So let's break this prehistoric game down. It's time for the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good. The graphics are good, as well are the animations. Um, it's a very cartoony game, and it's not at all meant to be taken seriously with its style. The controls are very responsive and not at all floaty, although the hit detection with the jump kick can be a little spotty at times. Music is also good and embodies that stereotypical caveman vibe with a lot of earthy and percussive instruments. The bad. While the music is good, it gets old fast. Um, 
each level has roughly five stages, the fifth stage being the boss, and each stage uses the same music as the previous stage. Now, the boss stage has its own music, and that leads us to another bad thing. And so I'm not going to mix my words up, I'm just going to read straight from the script, because I've put it just precisely how I want to say it, and I don't want to free thought this one. So, the boss is actually easier than the preceding parts, as it's just a simple repetitive strategy. For example, the first boss just runs back and forth while you throw a rock at him until he dies. It doesn't enrage or speed up or anything, and they give you a platform to stand on to completely avoid any danger of getting hit while you throw the rock. The boss should be more challenging than the parts leading up to it, not vice versa. The final bad part about Chuck Rock, it's just the complete unforgiving nature of the game. Like I've mentioned earlier, there are no instant one-ups, and it takes 100,000 points to actually earn an extra life. And that is very slow going to get that extra life, because in the levels you collect different sorts of items. In the first level it's various meat products such as like ham haunches or pig heads and I think the most amount of points you can get for an item is the pig head which is 10,000 points. So you would need roughly 10 of them to get the 100,000 points to get the extra life. Now from what I can remember there's only one to two pig heads per stage and the rest are just like miscellaneous meat products that might give you a couple of thousand points. So as you can tell, the extra lives, you really have to stretch your ability to play this game to get them. Otherwise, you're just going to be getting hurt trying to get these extra points from the meat products to actually get the extra lives. So the best course of action you can do is just not get hit. Which again is kind of a challenge because of all of the hit detection problems. Especially from like the flying uh, monsters that attack you because that jump kick really it's not gonna help you as much as you hope you've gotta time that sucker just right and a lot of times you're not gonna be able to do it and you're gonna get hit perhaps a couple of times if not more than that so you get hit enough you lose your little heart it shrinks down to a little dead heart thing and you die and if you burn through all of those extra lives you start off with three so if you get any more than that, you're lucky. But if you lose all of your lives, you die, you game over, you go back to the start of the game, and that's it. That's when you throw your controller down because this game has finally broken you. Damn you, Chuck Rock. Damn you. So, the ugly. That fucking pterodactyl. Seriously, that pterodactyl is made up of 100% pure, unfiltered annoyance. Everything about it induces rage. It flies around all over the place while squawking like an asshat, and unless you have a rock with you, it's more than likely going to hit you before you can kill it. The worst part is it starts squawking before it's even on the screen! Apparently, it's a bipolar species of dinosaur too, since sometimes some of them help you and other times they'll attack you like you just made an omelet out of its eggs. So what's my verdict for Chuck Rock? If you want to play a good caveman game, play Joe and Mac. Wait, why didn't I play that one instead? That would, that would have made more sense. My name isn't half the title. Damn. Well, I mean, it's not like I could ever possibly review Joe and Mac. Now could I? <laughs> Sorry. I'm Joe from the Wrong Channel. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Great day.